In this video, I'll show you how to set up your M1. We'll talk about how to set the 15 different intensity levels from 1 up to 15, and we'll talk about how to select one of the 30 standard protocols. The first thing you should do when setting up the M1 is to select a set of coils. You plug the coils into the audio jack as shown in the movie. Make sure you plug the coils in firmly to make sure they're plugged in all the way. Even if they're sticking out just a millimeter or so, that'll prevent the M1 from functioning properly. Then you need to check the three LEDs. The three LEDs should flash on as soon as you turn the power on. Looking now at the OLED display, as soon as you turn the power on, you'll see the three LEDs flash on and then the OLED display will turn on. That means the device is powering up and it's ready to use. If the M1 has already got the settings on it that you want to use, you simply turn the device on. You'll see the OLED screen turn on with the copyright screen. And then the next screen tells you the intensity level. You don't have to do anything. If you just wait about four seconds, it'll switch to the next screen, which shows you the protocol. If you wait about another four seconds, the OLED screen will clear and the device starts to operate automatically. You know the device is operating when you see the green LED flashing. You just leave it running and the device will continue to provide stimulation until it runs out of batteries or until you turn it off. The other option that you have is that once you've turned the device on, if it's already got the settings you want, you can just use the red button to more quickly advance through the screens. Here I was using a screwdriver to press the red button, and then it quickly gets you to the point where the device is operating. You can see with the flashing green LED. But let's say you actually want to change the intensity setting. You have to do all of these changes right when you turn the power on. As soon as the screen says power level, you have to press the white button. Every time you press it, the power level will go down one. So say, if, for example, I want to set the power level to 11. I just need to keep pressing the button until it goes all the way down and then starts from the top and comes back down to 11. Now, most people don't need to have full power on the M1. Generally, people get the best results if they're using a power setting between eight and 10, but you have to self-experiment. Um, here I was using a screwdriver just to press the button so that you could see which button I was pressing, but really you don't want to use a screwdriver. The buttons are meant to be pressed by your fingers. But keep in mind, higher intensity does not result in better or faster results. And sometimes people have a setting so high that it actually slows down their progress. The intensity selection requires a certain amount of self-experimentation to see what works best for your individual case. Once the M1 is running, once the green LED is flashing, you cannot adjust the intensity. You have to turn the device off and then back on in order to make any adjustments to the intensity or the protocol. And I designed it this way to prevent inadvertent changes in intensity or protocol while the device is in use. Once again, setting the protocols is a lot like setting the intensity. The white button will allow you to scroll through the protocols. You just have to wait until you reach the protocol adjustment screen. There it is, select protocol. Every time you press the white button, you'll scroll down one protocol. So say we wanted to get to Omni 8, which I just inadvertently went past. You can only scroll down, so keep pressing the white button about once every two seconds or so, and you'll see each protocol listed. So it's a really good idea to have in mind which protocol you want so that when you get to it, you can stop. It's really not very good to just use the white button to um, browse through the different protocols. Have in mind what you want, and when you see it, there it is, Omni 8, stop pressing the button. Now when you stop pressing the white button for four seconds, the device will automatically advance forward and go into auto run mode. You can see this with the green LED flashing. You know the device is working. So now you can just go ahead and leave the device running and it will continue to operate until you turn it off or until you take the battery out. You don't have to run the battery out completely, but keep in mind that once you've set the protocol and the intensity, 
you really can't make any adjustments to the system unless you turn the system off and then turn it back on. To the right and in our um, documentation, you can see the list of different protocols that are available. We have standard legacy protocols, Schumann resonances, fixed constant pulse rate protocols, um, protocols to emulate transcranial magnetic stimulation, and brainwave entrainment protocols, and standard protocols that have a five minute rest at the end of each cycle. There are a few things you should consider before selecting a protocol. There are 30 different protocols and you need to read up on them a little bit to decide which one you want before you turn the M1 on. And that way when you're scrolling through the list, you can stop right on the one that you want. The M1 is not really designed to allow casual browsing. Um, it's not like an iPhone. The M1 is really designed for prompt, convenient startup when you already know what it is that you want to do. So when you first buy one and start using it, it seems like things are going a little bit fast. But once you've used it a few times, you'll see that things move along really quickly so that in just a few seconds, you can have everything set up and it's operating correctly and you can just tuck it away and forget about it. Now, the other thing to realize, um, as far as I know, scientifically, and I've read over a thousand papers on PEMF, there's really no such thing as an honest, reliable table where you say PEMF protocol X will treat condition Y. That's really sort of, um, I would say it's more like marketing gibberish, or in some cases it's marketing fraud. They're making a fraudulent claim. PEMF is really experimental, and you have to try different uh, protocols to see what works well for you. Now on the M1, the protocols fall into a broad categories. Um, there's uh, about five different broad categories that you can use for self-experimentation. These include our standard protocols that I've been developing for about 20 years or so to look at the effects on inflammation and pain. And I also provide these standard protocols with five minute rest at the end of each cycle. Some people just find that to be more comfortable. I've also included uh, Schumann resonances to allow variation in your self-experimentation. And frankly, a lot of these, a lot of people like those frequencies. Um, I have fixed constant rate pulses that show up in the literature over and over again, one or two, three, four, five or 10 pulses per second, steady pulse rate shows up in the scientific literature all the time. And so I've included those. I've also included some transcranial magnetic stimulation, uh, TMS protocols, but our system of course is much, much lower power. It's about less than 1% the power of a clinical TMS system. But there's a lot of uh, discussion among TMS researchers and scholars that they're using way too much power and they get the same beneficial clinical effects with TMS if they just used a lot less power. And this is something you can look up on the internet and make a decision for yourself. But generally speaking, when it comes to electromagnetism, the less power and the lower the frequency, the safer it is. And then of course the last set are brainwave entrainment protocols, alpha, beta, delta, theta, and you can experiment with those as well.